Use your 3D printer to make more with a dozen of the best 3D printable workshop tools. If you like to make things with your 3D printer, then you probably like to make things in other ways too. So why not 3D print some tools to help you make more? In this video, I'm gonna present 12 of the best 3D printable tools to help you do just that. Previously, I made this video on 3D printed workshop tools, which is linked below. All of the tools in that video were novel and useful. In fact, some of them I've been using constantly since then. I enjoyed making that video and it proved really popular. So we're back with a sequel and I've scaled the free items on printables to handpick another 12 quality 3D printable tools. We're going to organize this into categories with our first being marking and measuring. Our first tool is this self-center engage by Chris Aero Engineering Design. This item is simple and easy to print but has multiple uses. There's a one piece simplified version available but as you can see here I went for the three piece version with the chamfered center hole. All we need to put this together is two M5 by 25mm bolts and two M5 lock nuts. The bolts simply slide through the printed sleeves and then the combo is inserted from underneath and screwed into the lock nut. You need to repeat this for the other side making sure you use symmetrical holes. Here's our finished tool so how does it work? This works with any plank that fits within the sleeves. We rotate the gauge to find the centre, put the pencil in the middle and slide back and forth to draw a perfect centre line. I'm sure you'll agree this is so much easier than the traditional technique of taking measurements across the width, marking at a halfway distance at two different places, and then aligning our ruler to draw our center point between the two marks. There's just no comparison, but that's not all this tool does, because we can also draw lines offset from the edge of our piece. There are guides from 10 to 30 millimeters in five millimeter increments. We put the pencil in the guide that we want and slide along the edge to have a perfect offset line. I think this is particularly handy if you have a flat panel and you're looking to drill some mounting holes the same distance in from the edge. If you're modeling your own parts to 3D print, you'll know the importance of taking accurate dimensions so your printed parts fit their intended situations. Previously, I covered this fillet gauge from TNA TMR that will let you measure real world objects and determine the radius of any curves on the outside. Offering that functionality and more are these 3D design gauges from my patron Andy. There's two files to print, with the smaller version also having a bolt measure inbuilt. And this is what it's going to look like after you print the two standard parts. There is one step for post-processing, and that's to drill out each hole to the correct size for accuracy. This will enable the first of the gauges functions, which is finding the external diameter of different objects. The second function relates to the two fillets found on each segment. You can compare external curves to each segment until you find the matching radius. Not only that, but the curved edge for each segment will allow you to measure and determine the radius for internal fillets too. The final function relates to the thickness of the gauge. Not long ago, I had a design situation where I wanted a stopper to prevent this lock from accidentally being pushed in, but I found it impossible to get my calipers inside to measure the clearance required. I used this tool as a feeler gauge to work out the spacing for each section, which saved me having to do it with trial and error. Here's the printed part, and I'm pleased to report that it fitted perfectly on the first attempt. If your primary focus is measuring the radius of internal and external fillets, then I'd recommend this radius gauge by Mibler. All of the small components are laid out in three easy to print plates, as well as the top and bottom cover. This tool has some very minor assembly, and your first job once you've printed all of the parts is to sort all of the components into ascending order. And you'll need to do this for both convex and concave pieces. Once you've done this, you can start to build them into a stack and thread them over the top of an M5 bolt. This can be a little bit fiddly, but patience will bring success. And here is the finished item. I inverted the top plate because I didn't have countersunk bolts and I've talked them up just enough that the parts don't flail about, but I can swing them out comfortably when I need to. This tool works exactly like you would expect. One side has gauges to measure the radius of internal fillets, and the other side has gauges to measure the radius of external fillets. This is a simple, but very effective 3D printed tool. The tools so far have been particularly well suited 
for those that need to measure up when they're 3D modeling. So why not expand and look at some tools that can benefit a lot of situations. Our next category of tool is for clamping and holding. We'll start with electronics and let's say we want to solder these two wires together. A tool to hold the two ends in place already exists for this job, but to be honest, I find them a bit clunky and I don't use mine that often. Enter the cable soldering jig by Verts99. There's just a single piece to print and its relative simplicity is what I really like about it. It does the same job as the helping hand, but I find this one much easier to use. You simply take the two ends of your wire and push them into whatever slot fits best. And the range of slot sizes make this versatile for thick and thin cable alike. The two ends will be held securely in place while you solder, freeing up both hands to do the job neatly. Considering one of my soldering irons is cordless to be portable, it makes sense to keep this small and light item with it. Next up, we have the Mantis Clamp by Zuberio, which is also ideal for holding small and delicate electronics. This tool is print in place and requires precision, so I switch to a Revo 0.2mm nozzle. There's two pre-designed support structures in place that should fall away from the model. After that, you need to clean up the underside surfaces by removing any loose extrusions. Following that, if your printer is precise enough, you should simply be able to turn the dial on top to open and close the clamp. There's a couple of different leg or stand designs available. These symmetrical legs are the quickest and easiest to print and they slide down from the end locking into place, but I didn't find them that reliable. This other version does take longer to print, but I found that it worked quite well. And I liked the fact that the jaws can still move freely while the clamp is in the stand. And if you're wondering how strong this clamp is, it's strong enough to hold PCBs and its own weight when holding the PCB, yet remains very simple to open and close. For me, I'm happy to have a clamp that can hold small and delicate parts next time I'm working on them. Next up are these corner clamps from the Red Coat, and they're really simple as you can see in this picture, but also very effective. They come in a large range of different sizes, and the ones I printed are the mini version. Printing them is really straightforward, the only recommendation I have is high in feel and thick walls to maximise strength. And the only thing you would need to check post printing is that they match and are in fact 90 degrees. If you were gluing, screwing or nailing pieces together with a 90 degree junction, you'll find these tools invaluable as an aid. You'll be able to hold all of your pieces accurately in position for as long as you need. I also found them very handy for holding this draw divider in place while I added some nails from the front, back and bottom. Getting these dividers accurately in position would have been a lot more difficult without this simple but effective printed tool. Our last printable tool in this category is my favourite and it's this bench mountable vise by Sneaks. As you can see it won first place in a design competition for mechanical marvels and boy does it deserve it because this thing is a masterpiece. You can print it in a 3-jaw, 4-jaw or 2-jaw configuration. It's got special alignment tools to help with assembly and it's got many choices of parts including the jaws. And as the name suggests it is 100% printable, no external metal hardware required. And as a bonus, on top of the assembly instructions on printables, there's also a concise video guide to putting this thing together. The simplest way to make this is to work out how many jaws you want and then print the collection of parts that are pre-prepared. In my case, I went for the three jaw vise. Beyond this, most of the parts are listed individually in the a la carte section if you want to mix and match components. If you're finding the clearance for any of the gears too tight, there's four variations for each style provided as well. This whole design is oozing care and detail throughout. I followed the suggestions for materials and printed the parts in a range of colours and on a few different printers. In terms of post-processing, all you should need to do is to snip some of the parts free as they have an airfix style model spur joining them together. This corner segment of the top plate can stay on, but I decided that I'd like to remove it because I think it looks a little bit cleaner. I found that even with the pieces designed to give the most clearance, some parts were a little bit tight for fitment. To address this, I used a file to just take off the very edges of where these parts slid in. I also removed a very minimal amount from the top plate. I then applied a small amount of lubricant to the entry point for each gear, and this resulted in the jaw sliding much more freely for less than a minute's work. Before continuing, I also added some grease to the underside of the gears, before flipping everything back over and moving the gears outwards to align with the alignment tool. A short screw is used to temporarily hold this in place, 
before we take the scroll plate, insert it from the underside and turn it anti-clockwise until it falls into position. You'll know it's right when it's sitting flush with the bottom of the top plate. We can now secure the top plate to the base, with the base having a raised section to match with the cutout of the top plate. We hold it with three long screws, one in each corner, before inserting the thumb wheel into the remaining corner and using a medium screw to retain it in its place. We're now finished with the alignment tool so it can be removed, and at this point it's good to check that everything is operating smoothly. If it is, we can take our removable jaws, insert them from the top and use a short screw for each one to lock them into position. Using the holes in the base, you could bolt this vise to the bench because it has surprisingly good gripping power. My plan is a little different however, I intend to use this vise to hold delicate models if I want to sand and paint them, perhaps with some custom TPU jaws. Let's not forget about power tools, and while we can't 3D print them entirely, we can print complementary tools to make them better. Our final category is power tool accessories. The next tool addresses a common scenario. Let's say you're drilling through a wall to install a mounting bracket and then you look down and find that there's mess all over the floor. Enter the drill guide with dust collector by Bear Lord. There's only a single file to print and it doesn't need support. So let's see this simple tool accessory in action. We place it over our target on the wall and use the arrow spikes on the outside to get it level. And then we simply place our drill bit in the center cutout and drill the hole as we normally would. Now you can see here that some dust is escaping through the bottom and that's because this wall is neither flat or smooth. I think with some foam back taped on the back to help seal against the wall, this would be perfect because it still managed to capture the majority of the dust. A handy little tool that I'll be using from now on. Our next three tools all complement a table saw, one of the most useful workshop tools you can have, but also one of the most hazardous to use. You can see that my table saw came with its own push stick, but that didn't stop me from printing this wood push stick from Matthias. In my opinion, it's more ergonomic and better suited for pushing through heavy planks securely. Complementing that is this featherboard by JC James 13009. This is another accessory that enhances safety, so let's see the two in action. Firstly printing, and I made the featherboard from PETG for the added flexibility. The other components were PLA, but I did need to modify the T-nut to suit my particular table saw. I used the plain cut tool in Mesh Mixer to make some quick and dirty adjustments of some of the thicknesses. Assembly is as simple as pushing an M6 bolt through the bottom of the T-nut and an M6 nut into the other half. And these new modified T-nuts were the perfect size to fit onto my machine and hold everything in place without any wobble. Here's our scenario, ripping 10mm off a large piece, which leaves a gap between the fence that we don't want our fingers anywhere near, and this gap is too narrow for my original push stick. This frees up a hand that we can use our old push stick plus our new one to safely push the plank through, allowing us to complete the cut safely and accurately. Sometimes when we're using these saws, we don't want to cut the whole way through, and our next tool will help in these situations. This is the bit and blade bridge by Darren's Workshop, and it'll work as you see here with a table router, as well as a table saw which I'm about to demonstrate. I printed this one from regular white PLA. To use it, we place it on our table saw or table router, and then adjust the blade up or down until we reach our required cutting depth. Simple, accurate and repeatable, where previously I would do a test cut and then measure it with a ruler, adjusting as many times as necessary. This accessory helps a table saw be an even better tool for cutting slots when building enclosures. Finally, an accessory suitable for any power tool that generates dust. This flexible segmented vacuum hose by Tesla Punk. There are four components. One end attaches to your shop vac. The other end is a nozzle with an expansion to go around a drill. And then you print as many links as needed in between. I built up a lot of links quickly on my big nozzle CR10 Max. This item has the easiest assembly of anything here, as each link simply snaps into the last. This modular design makes it really quick and easy to build up the required length of vacuum hose. I've connected up mine to my dust extraction system, so let's see how this printed accessory works. As you can see, this is not collecting every bit of dust, but it is getting most of it. And that's not even important, because the rest can easily be connected once the drilling is finished. Another free and valuable 3D printed power tool accessory. And that makes 12, but because he's still here, here's a bonus item. In my version of a fractal vise that can conform and grip almost any shape. 
It's more of a novelty tool, but you can watch the video and see if it's right for you. I think the great thing is that not only can we print these amazing tools, but we have generous community members who are willing to release them for free. So thank you so much to all the designers who have tools featured in this video and elsewhere. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing your own tools. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.